Hello everybody, my name is Cyrus Jansen. I'm an American expat and China veteran of over 10 years. And in today's video, we will be discussing why the United States was destined to be the worldwide leader in COVID-19 cases. Now the statistics are quite remarkable. The United States represents 5% of the world's population. However, it also represents 25% of worldwide COVID-19 cases. Now, how is it possible that the world's most powerful and strongest country in the world is actually losing this battle to COVID-19? I believe that there are two main reasons. The first is leadership and the second is freedom. And I'm going to discuss those points in greater detail as we get started. But to start off this video, let's take a look at this tweet sent out by Donald Trump last week. We are united in our effort to defeat the invisible China virus. And many people say that it is patriotic to wear a face mask. There is nobody more patriotic than me, your favorite president. Now, this is a very Donald Trump tweet. First of all, he calls it the China virus again. Now, this is something that he first said in March, and he has continued to say this over and over again. And it's really the only card that he has left to play because the United States has basically failed its people to control COVID-19. And so you have to blame somebody else. And blaming somebody else is not something that's new to Donald Trump. Take a look at this quote from 2005. You never blame yourself. You have to blame something else. If you do something bad, never ever blame yourself. Now this is from Donald Trump back in 2005. We can see 15 years later, he's basically doing the same thing. And that is something that really has become kind of the policy of the American government right now is we need to find somebody else to blame. But let's, let's give you some better perspective about this. Let's look at some older footage from earlier this year in February when the coronavirus first came to the United States. We pretty much shut it down coming in from China. You know, in April, supposedly it dies with the hotter weather. When it gets warm, uh, historically, that has been able to kill the virus. The people are getting better. They're all getting better. And the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. And you'll be fine. Uh, they're going to have vaccines, I think, relatively soon. Not only the vaccines, but the therapies. Therapies is sort of another word for cure. You're talking about very small numbers in the United States. Our numbers are lower than just about anybody. It's really working out. And a lot of good things are going to happen. And we are responding with great speed and professionalism. It's going to go away. Yeah. No, I don't take responsibility at all. We're going to all be great. We're going to be so good. This came up. It, it we came up so suddenly. This is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. All you had to do is look at other countries. Now, from this video, we can clearly see that Donald Trump downplayed the seriousness of COVID-19 for weeks upon weeks. And then all of a sudden says, it came out of nowhere. This is a pandemic. I knew it from day one. Well, I really wish that Donald Trump would have started wearing a facial mask back at that time when he actually declared out of his own words that it was a pandemic. The reality is, is that Donald Trump has a very loyal following in the United States. I have to believe that if Donald Trump would have wore a facial mask back in March or April and really told his loyal followers in America that this is a serious virus, that we need to take this serious, I would have to imagine that a lot of Americans would have actually followed his lead. But unfortunately for Donald Trump, you know, his ego got in the way. He never wore a mask for up to five months now. And now finally he wears a mask and he doesn't even claim that it's actually beneficial for science reasons. You know, it doesn't say that this will actually help prevent the disease. He actually just says, I'm being patriotic. But it's actually funny. Donald Trump's actually gaining a lot of popularity in China. Take a look at this image that is being shared on Chinese social media. Now take a look at these two, two Chinese characters. This The first character is Dong, which means to understand. The second character is Wang, and that means king or emperor. So this could be loosely translated as the king of understanding or the emperor of understanding, the king of ominence, they say on here. And this is Chinese netizens are using this term to mock Donald Trump's self-righteous claims to basically be an expert in so many fields. And we've seen this many times before, Donald Trump saying, I'm an expert in technology. I'm an expert in medical fields. I'm an expert in basically everything that I do. But enough about Donald Trump, because I'm not trying to make a video to slam Donald Trump. I am saying that his leadership has certainly not helped the, co the cause of COVID-19 in America. However, I do believe there's something much greater and actually the core reason why America is struggling with COVID-19, and that is the Americans' obsession with freedom. Freedom, in fact, is so important that Americans value their freedom more than their life itself. And it actually starts back in American history. Take a look at this very famous quote that you've probably heard of at some point, and this is from Patrick Henry. 
give me liberty or give me death. Now, this is, again, is a very famous quote in American history. And this goes back to America's early colonial days when they had to fight for their freedom from the British. You see, America has been fighting for freedom basically their entire existence. So this is why I would say that America's love of freedom is really the cornerstone of American culture. Now, there's no greater way to prove this point than to show you a recent clip of some two fellow Americans that were trying to hand out facial masks on a beach in California. Oh man, that's just, yeah. that's a fraud, I like, bro. I like freedom, dog. I like, I like fresh air. I like freedom, dog. That's the first response that this American says when somebody tried to give him a facial mask. But what happens when you actually tell fellow Americans the reason why we should actually be wearing facial masks? But does wearing a mask shut down the country? When you close down half the economy, yeah, yeah I think so. But can't we open it up quicker if we all wear masks? No, nah, dude, that's, that's a talking point on the TV, bro. Now, right now, I'm sure many of you have seen these scenes where Americans are basically throwing temper tantrums in stores because they're not being allowed to enter in by wearing a facial mask. They're basically saying, look, I woke up in a free country. I get to do whatever I want to do, and I will not be forced to wear a facial mask. I mean, only in America would you ever see a headline like this. Texas patient in his 30s dies after reportedly citing a mistake of attending a COVID party. A COVID party is when somebody that has COVID-19 attends a party and everybody that doesn't have COVID-19 also attends the party. They take money, they put it into a pool, and if anybody gets diagnosed with COVID-19 after the party, well, then they win the money in the pool. I try to tell my Chinese friends this and they really just can't understand what I'm trying to say. They're like, there's no possible way that Americans can be this stupid and this idiotic to actually go and attend a COVID party. Do they not realize that hundreds of thousands of people have died as a result of this virus? Because of our love of freedom, this has actually hindered a lot of Americans right now. You see, I have my American passport, and for my entire life, this passport has been a ticket to visa fee travel to over 190 countries around the world. Now take a look at this image right now. This is an image showing where Americans can travel on their passport right now, visa free, and you can see that we just have a handful of places around the world. Basically, our US passport right now has been rendered useless. I mean, even our neighbors are turning it back against Americans. Have a look at this cartoon that was published in a Canadian newspaper this past week. Here we have Mexicans that are protesting and blocking the border with the United States over fears of a COVID-19 infection. How about that? Four years later, after suggesting that we build a wall to keep out Mexicans from entering the United States, the tables have been completely flipped the other way around. Now, what amazes me with the people that are anti-mask is many of them are coming from the right wing, very conservative, very pro-Trump community. I mean, take a look at this video that shows a recent rally in the streets of America protesting facial masks. Now, many of the people in this video are hardcore Republicans. They are hardcore Donald Trump supporters. And I couldn't help but laugh when I saw this image trending online. My body, my choice, and you actually forgot the H in choice. Hashtag no mask. And just like that, the pro-life crowd became pro-choice. But it gets better from here. Take a look at this headline that was recently shared on CNN's website. Asia might have been right about facial masks. Really? Asia might have been right about facial masks? Why don't we look at some statistics from Asia just to see how facial masks have been working out for that part of the world. Now in this graph, I've chosen a few cities and countries in Asia and we can take a look at their numbers. Now the first number represents the total amount of cases. The second number represents the total amount of deaths. Now in Thailand, a country that has very close tourist connections to China, there's a total of 3,300 cases Total, the city of Hong Kong in China, a total of 2,800 cases. Now recently, Hong Kong has had a huge burst of infections where they had over 100 cases in a single day. That's actually not a lot for a city of 7.5 million people, especially when America is reporting in excess of 70 to 80,000 cases per day currently. This is after dealing with this virus for up to five months. But let's go back to the graph and look at some other places. We can look at Taiwan, Vietnam, Cambodia, all of these places in, res in respect, all of them have less than 500 cases in total. Between these three places, 
there's a total of two deaths. Now, there's a reason why Asia is much ahead of the curve from North America. The number one thing is wearing facial masks. The number two thing is that they use advanced systems to track where people go. Have a look at this QR code from one of my friends in Shanghai, China. Now, this is a QR code that basically every single person needs if you are in Shanghai. It does not matter if you are a Chinese citizen, a foreigner, a visitor, a resident. It doesn't matter if you are in China, you will need to have a QR code to basically enter any single building. You can see by this, there's essentially two colors, either a green or a red. And if you have a red, that means that you have been infected with COVID, or for instance, you've just traveled into the country and you haven't been completed your 14-day quarantine. Now, this is a really interesting system because what it does is it allows it to track everybody's health and seemingly wherever you go in Shanghai, you have that QR code scanned and therefore you have a record. And this is scanned everywhere. This is if you're going to a convenience store, to the library, to the grocery store, store, to a restaurant, any single place or building, you will have to have your QR code scanned. Now, this system has been proven very effective because if someone has COVID-19 at a convenience store, for example, and they know it was Tuesday at 2 p.m., they can then go online and see who else was in that store at that time. You can then send messages to those people that were at that store at that potential time, telling them there's a potential that they could be infected, they can quarantine, and you can essentially stop the spread. Now, this has been a very effective reason why countries in Asia have gotten ahead of the curb and why we see these astronomically low rates in many countries. Again, Vietnam, Cambodia, Taiwan, all of these countries that have a tremendous amount of you know, connections to China and Chinese tourists, all of them have very small rates because of this. But can you imagine if we tried this system in the United States of America? Everybody would say, whoa, 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 absolutely not. You are violating my freedom. I am an American. I can go wherever I want. You will not be able to track me. It doesn't matter if this is for the health of other people or for the country or for the society. It's all about my rights and it's about my freedom. And again, this is my main point with this video, the love of freedom and the, and the value that that is the true American value. This is why America is really struggling with COVID-19. Now, we're going to conclude this video by me simply explaining that if we were going to get through this time. Now, again, I'm American. I'm also a father. I have kids. I want my kids to go back to school. I want businesses to be reopened up. We have right now 40 million Americans that are unemployed. We, have, we are looking at potentially 28 million Americans facing eviction from their home because they're not going to be able to afford the mortgage payments right now. America is in a disaster crisis right now and we need to do what we can do to help stop the spread. Now, it doesn't matter if you think that wearing a facial mask is not important. I've heard so many nonsense excuses. You know, wearing a facial mask, you know, doesn't allow you to breathe in oxygen. You know, you're breathing in bad air. You're breathing in carbon monoxide. All of this is nonsense. Take a look at this graph just so you understand. And you can see by this, 90% risk of transmission if both people are not wearing a facial mask. You can see if you, it's just one of you, if you just wear your facial mask, you have reduced that by two thirds. And again, if both of you are wearing a facial mask, keeping your social distance apart, it is 0% risk of transformation, of transmitting rather, and you will not, and we will be able to stop the spread. So again, if you're still wondering if facial masks work, have a look at this graph. They're gonna make it even more simple for you to understand. And this is called the urine test. If we all run around naked and someone pees on you, you're gonna get wet right away. But if you're wearing pants, only some of you are gonna get wet. And if both people are wearing pants, only the person that pees on them is gonna get urine on their leg. I know it's funny, I know it's ridiculous, but I think what we need to do is we need to wear facial masks. And I want people to realize, look, I know that COVID-19 is not some crazy, ridiculous virus that's instantly gonna kill you. The vast majority of people do recover from COVID. However, it is a very strange disease because we've also seen people my age, in their 30s, in great health, get COVID and, and die, or simply be, have an extremely long recovery. We've also seen people be asymptomatic. We've seen people that are in their 70s or 80s recover after a week or two. So it's very interesting how we just don't really know a lot about this disease. And I think what we need to do in America right now, we need to get back on track. We need to realize that if, you know, like it or not, we're gonna have to get these numbers down if we're gonna want the economy reopened. So if that is truly what you want, do your part, wear a mask, and let's make sure that we can get America back to normal. So again, 
I want to thank you guys for uh, watching this video to this point. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Drop me a comment down below. Love hearing from you guys and can't wait to share you more insights from China and my travels around the world. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.